Now, and I guess when people keep streaming in, we'll just fill them in on it. Cool. We good? Yeah. All right, you guys. Okay. So, wow. This is, I'm a little bit nervous. This is going to be my first college info session for you guys. Been a while since I've taught. Yeah? How's everybody? Everybody's good? Yes. Yes? Everybody excited? Yes. Yes? Everybody ready to go to college? Yes. All right. That's what I like to hear. Okay, you guys. So for those of you who don't know me, okay, uh, my name is Hugh Kingston, and I am the program director here at Language Systems Downtown LA. Okay, most of you guys already know me, and a lot of you guys know that uh, I usually counsel a lot of students as to your academic plans, right? Whether you're staying here for a short time, or maybe you're going to be staying in the United States forever, okay? I'm here to help you guys out with that. Sounds good? Yeah. Yes? Okay, so why am I doing this today? Uh, one thing is that was very common when I've been speaking with you guys is that a lot of you guys really did not know about the American education system, okay? So I'm gonna start off with a little bit of the basics. We're gonna start off with some basic vocabulary about American colleges and American universities. And then we're gonna be moving to more detailed information, okay? Uh, such as what's the difference with the schools? How much do you need to pay? That's the main thing that everybody wants to know, right? How much am I gonna pay for college? Sounds good? And then if we have a little bit of time left, um, you guys, I'm going to open it up for questions. So you guys can go ahead and ask me whatever questions you guys want. Sound good? Yes. yes? Okay, awesome. All right, so really, really quick, this is just for, um, now some people have, you know, are just joining us. So just in case, I'm just showing you guys a little bit of short introduction to the school. Language systems, as you guys know, we are asset accredited. And we've been around for a pretty long time. We've been around since 1987. So yes, the school is that old. Thank you. There you go, right? Exactly, but we're that good too, right? Right, Stephanie? Yeah. yeah, see, you know what I'm talking about. All right, moving along, we basically have four schools. Most of you guys know we have four campuses, mostly in Southern California. One of those is off oh, is our South Bay Los Angeles campus. Another one is our Northeast Los Angeles campus, which is now in Pasadena. And then another one is our OC, or Orange County campus. And of course, we have our downtown LA campus. Yay! Never mind the picture, that's our old building. Okay, not this building. This building is cooler. Yeah? True? Yes, thank you. Very good. Okay, so moving on. Now, you guys already know that we offer a lot of programs, ESL, TESOL, uh, conversation classes, TOEFL, all that good stuff, yeah? I'm not really going to talk about that too much, okay? Because you guys, most of you guys already know this. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a quiz for you guys. I want you guys to please answer, okay? How do most U.S. high school students choose their colleges or universities? Anybody know? Yes. Yes? How, how do they choose? Rating and price. Rating and prices, okay, good. But who tells them? Uh, internet, like... Use, use. Internet, okay, that's pretty good. Any other ideas? Uh, a lot of well-known colleges like a UCLA or Berkeley. Or right, some of these are really well-known, so yeah. people already know about them. Okay, actually the correct answer is by listening to their friends. <laughs> Okay, just like all high school people, if you guys remember when you guys were back in high school and you guys were choosing, where do I want to go? I want to go where my friends are going. Oh, okay, stupid. yeah, that, that tends to be the number one reason. Okay, uh, who usually helps U.S. high school students with their college applications? So who usually helps high school students, American Parents? high school students, uh, write or prepare the applications? Parents. Parents, okay. Parents. Anybody else? Friends. Me? Hugo? <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes I do. <laughs> okay. The correct answer is friends and family. So yeah, you're right. Um, many people kind of assume that high schools usually, that high school counselors help students with their applications. Not really. No. It's actually their friends and family who are the number one resource for most Americans. Okay. Now compared to U.S. students, this is more for you guys. Compared to U.S. students, how much more do international students pay for college? More. How much more? What do you think? 
Thirty percent or thirty percent? Thirty percent, forty percent more. Any other guesses? I think that like ten times the more, maybe. Ten times. Okay, so ten times more. Okay. Any other guesses? Okay, the correct answer is two or three times more. Right. And we're gonna be you guys are gonna be seeing this a little bit more. Okay. So this is just a little bit of quick facts. Okay. It's not just international students, it's also non-residents. Okay, and I'll be talking more about that in just a second. Okay? All right. So which way should I go? Should I go college or university? Okay. Now before we get start um, I'm gonna move into this. Wait, you guys are going to hear this a lot. You guys are going to hear the word college and the word university a lot. Okay? College and universities, are they the same or are they different? Different. Different. Very good. Okay? Which one is higher? College university. or university? university? Universities. Very good. Okay. Now, many, many times in our regular English vocabulary, sometimes we switch between college student and university student, right? And you guys have probably heard a lot of Americans switching between, oh, I'm a college student or, oh, I'm a university student, okay? So in regular conversation, the meaning is basically the same. But when we think about the actual school, they are very different. Okay, so I'm going to talk today, I'm going to mostly talk about the public school system. Okay, I'm not going to talk about the private school system because some private schools are very, very different. Okay, and, and they, they all have their own policies, their own requirements. So I'm going to talk about the, for California, the public school system in California. And that first begins with community colleges. Now, a lot of you guys are very familiar with community colleges, but I want to see how much do you guys already know. What do you guys already know about community colleges? Tell me. It is cheap. Cheaper. Okay, that's true. So it is cheaper. Anything else? Uh, give me some examples of community colleges. Which ones do you guys know? LACC. LACC, good. Los Angeles City College. What's that? Santa Monica College, Pasadena. Exactly, all of the colleges, right? Usually the CC, okay? So Santa Monica College, Pasadena City College, all of those, right? Now, what else? They are cheaper. They're actually the cheapest in the public school system. What else? Anything else? How long do people usually study at community colleges? Very good, two years, two years. Very good, excellent, two years. Can you get a degree at community colleges? No. Yes, very good. You can get a degree, an associate's degree. And usually in the United States, the degrees, and let me put this down here, associate's degrees, associate degrees are usually separated between two types, okay? Uh, arts and science. So the subjects that you study are usually categorized into two different types. Right? So it would be AS, Associate's Degree of Science, or AA, Associate's Degree of Art. Make sense? Yeah? So if, you, if your major is math, which way would it be? Science or art? Science. science. If your major is English, science or art? Or science. Art. Right. If your major is, uh, if you're going to become a lawyer, science or art? Science. Art, right, exactly, right. Those are typically how it's organized. Yeah? Okay, human, human degrees usually arts. Correct, exactly. The humanities, very good. The humanities are usually in the arts field. Make sense? Yeah? So this way you guys can understand AS or AA, okay, when you guys see this. What about design? Design, uh, what kind of design? Graphic design. Graphics design. What do you guys think? I've seen, depending on the discipline, I've seen them on both sides. <laughs> AS or, uh, I've seen them under science and art. Science. Okay? All right. Anyway, moving along. Okay, so you, that's, a basic, uh, that's a basic rundown of community colleges. Very good. Then we have Cal State. Now we have our Cal State universities. So now we're going into our universities. 
Correct, very good. They're usually called community colleges because they're the most accessible for students, okay? They're the cheapest form of education and they are, you know, anybody can pretty much take classes there. You mean if the name is not, if they don't call the community college, does it make that private? Um, depends. It really depends. I mean, usually, uh, how can you tell the difference between a community college and a private college? A lot of the times, it's because they usually have city college in there or community college. They specifically say that. Right, exactly. If they don't have that, then it normally tends to be private. Okay? Question. Yes. Uh, after two years in college, the student can transfer for university for study more two years. Correct. And I'll be talking more about that in just a okay. second. Okay. So I'm going to move a little bit faster. Now we're talking about universities. Cal State. Okay. Now in California, there are two types of public universities. The Cal State system and the UC system or the University of California or also known as UC. Okay, UC system. Both of them are considered universities. Both of them, you guys can get degrees, some of the higher, they're four years. Both of them are four year degree, uh, four year universities. Okay, you can get bachelors, you can get masters at both schools. You can also get doctorates at both schools. Okay, at both types of schools. Okay, but the focus is a little bit different between both. Okay, now let's think about community colleges. When you go to community colleges, usually what kind of learning do you want or what kind of job are you looking up for when you graduate from a community college? Simple job. Mm, no. Well, like the starts, for starts, like a entry junior level job. job. Um, not necessarily entry level, but think of it this way it's a little bit of more, for lack of better words, manual labor. We, we call this blue collar, blue collar jobs, right? Blue collar jobs would be, for example, the jobs that um, require, that doesn't require a lot of school, okay? For example, plumbing, you know, you go to work yeah. right away. Uh, auto mechanic, right? If you're going to be a mechanic, you don't need so much schooling, mm -hmm. okay? You need your certificates, you need your degrees, yes, but you don't need to, you don't need to go to school for such a long time. Does that make sense? And in some cases, construction, right? Or in some cases, nursing. Some nursing certificates you can get at community colleges, okay? Now, for universities, for Cal State, now Cal State universities are actually cheaper in price compared to UC, and we're gonna talk, we're gonna see that a little bit more. Cal State universities, they offer almost the same programs as UC system universities. But the focus for Cal State, number one, they're cheaper in tuition. And number two, also, they're more geared towards working, working adults. You know, like if you're working at the same time that you're studying, they offer schedules that are usually more friendly for people who are currently working. Okay? UCs are pretty much what you imagine a university to be. Okay, um, they have just about subjects in almost every field, and they have, you know, they have, they offer a lot more services at UC universities. Okay, all right. Can I, can I ask you? How yes. I can understand uh, if it's Cal State University or just university. Good question. How do you? How can you tell the difference if it is a Cal State University or a UC University? Usually in the name. For example. The closest Cal State around here would be Cal State LA, Cal State Los Angeles. We have Cal State Long Beach, Cal State uh, San Luis Obispo, uh, Cal State Northridge. Those are some of the more popular ones. Cal State Fullerton. Okay, so all of them would have Cal State on it. Okay, or most of them. Uh, UCs. UCLA. Exactly. UCLA, right? UC Irvine, UC Berkeley. Okay. UC uh, UC San Diego. Right? This is how you can tell the difference. Okay? All right. So anyway, moving on. So we pretty much spoken about the differences in the degrees that are offered at these schools. So if we keep moving on, now if we think about admissions, I'm mostly just going to compare community colleges and universities in general. Okay? In this case, my example is going to be mostly 
Pasadena City College and UCLA. Now some of this information might be a couple of years old, okay? Um, because this tends to change all the time. Now let's talk about admissions. Uh, two years community colleges, they're much easier for you guys to get in, both Americans and international students. You don't need too much to be able to apply to these colleges. Uh, they're much less strict. Uh, they generally accept everybody who graduates from high school, okay? And uh, also, in terms of TOEFL, because that's important for international students, the average TOEFL IBT score is 45 points. If you guys know TOEFL, maximum score is 120, okay? So 45 out of 120 is not too bad. Most people can do this, okay? All right, now, four-year universities, there are, they have much stricter requirements, okay? Uh, you need to have some really good grades depending on what kind of subject it is that you're going, or what kind of subject or major you're applying for, okay? Uh, they generally require that all students achieve a minimum SAT or ACT score. This is more for American high school students, okay? And then they also require uh, additional extracurricular activities. Again, this is for high school, high school students. Um, in the American system, we don't just focus on academics. We also focus on what do you do after school? Do you participate in sports? Do you participate in clubs? Are you an officer in a club? That's considered really important, okay? Now, the TOEFL scores can vary between school to school, but usually for a bachelor's, minimum that I've seen would be 60 points on the TOEFL, minimum, okay? And it's usually higher depending on the school. Okay, uh, for master's degrees, the minimum that I've seen would be around 80, 80 points on the TOEFL test. And of course, for doctorate, 100 points on up. Okay, so a near perfect. Okay, so this is to give you guys a basic idea of how much of a TOEFL score you guys need if you guys are gonna apply directly there. Okay, all right, moving on. Now let's talk, let's get to the golden question, cost. How much does it cost to go to college? Okay, let's take a look at the two-year community uh, colleges, PCC as an example. Now, I'm going to talk about California residents. Okay, what, who are California residents? Basically, California residents would be people who are registered in California and who paid California taxes. Okay. But if you don't work, or for example, if I get the California ID, because I can do it, or California driver license, I'm not... You doing have it. to be, no, it has to be California taxes, right? Oh, yeah, you're, you're paying taxes in California, yeah. you have right? To pay. Exactly, right? Because think of it this way, this, this is the state, California, in this case, controls these schools, right? Oh, okay. So they need to offer special incentives or special pricing that makes it accessible for California taxpayers. Does that make sense? Yeah? So that's why we're looking at the resident fee. When you guys see resident, you guys are gonna see two types of fees. It's gonna be resident or non-resident, okay? So international students, which one are you? Resident or non-resident? Non-resident, right. So you guys would fall under the non-resident category. Does that make sense? Now. Let's say I am American, but I pay taxes in Ohio. Why? No, let's just say, just as an example. That's a good question, but just as an example. So what am I? Am I a, res am I a California resident or non-resident? Non -resident. So I would pay the same price you guys would. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. So that's one of the things that when you guys are looking how much does it cost, you guys want to look at resident or non-resident fees. Okay, so let's take a look at PCC, Pasadena City College, for an example, okay? For the California resident, um, I don't, this was a couple of years ago, the fees were $46 per unit, okay? So by unit, we mean every class is worth a certain number of units, okay? On the average, it's about three to four units for one class. Okay, and all of those units, you need a maximum of like about 180 units for graduation, okay? Whenever you finish a class. So they charge you by unit. So some classes are cheaper, some classes are more expensive. Okay, uh, uh, some classes are a lot more expensive. Now, for one semester cost, if you are a full-time student, as a full-time student, you need to be taking at least 12 units in one semester. Okay, that's considered full-time. So 
the total number of units for your classes should be 12 units for one semester. Okay? Um, that's about four, four or five months. Yeah, four months. But anyway, uh, now when I'm saying 12 units, this is about three or four classes. Okay? If you guys are wondering. Okay? Now, for one semester, the total cost for 12 units would be $552. Cost per year, if we're only looking at tuition, okay, just the price of school, a California resident would pay $1,104. Now, if we include per year, correct. Now, if we include housing too, right, if we're also paying for housing, then the estimated cost is about $10,000, $10,309 for a California resident, okay? Now let's compare this to a non-resident. A non-resident, you guys, instead of paying $46 per unit, you would pay $280 for one unit. It's a big difference, right? Pretty, pretty, a pretty big change. So again, for 12 units, you guys would be paying $3,360 instead of $552 that a California resident pays, okay? So if you're looking at the year cost, if you're taking one year of classes, you're looking at about $6,720, okay? It's expensive. When you're comparing it to a California resident, yes, it is more expensive, but it's not too crazy either, right? If you think about it, $6,000 for one year of your education, that's not too bad. Okay, but of course, and the housing costs, this can vary, right? Because it really depends where you live, you know, if you have roommates or you don't have roommates, if you live close to the school or not, right? Okay, all right, now let's compare this to UCLA so you guys can see how big of a difference this is. California resident fee, the cost per year for tuition alone is 12,000. Okay, this is per year, 12,900. That's a big change, right? 1,100? to 12,000, this is for a resident. Really, really big difference. If we calculate all of the other costs that we have here, room and board, books, supplies, health insurance, all that stuff, it can come out to $34,000 a year. This is including your living, your living expenses. Yeah, so that's a lot of money, right? To go to universities, okay? Now let's compare that to international students, okay? For international students, now the tuition for California residents is 12,900, right? For international students, the estimated tuition is 26,682. You guys are paying uh, you guys are paying over $10,000 more, $14,000 on top. Okay? Uh, if you're looking, if you're estimating plus housing and all that, that comes out to about $60,000 per year. So it's a huge difference, right? Okay. Now, sure. yes. One, one question. Of course. Resident, uh, we are social, yes. Usually, yes. Yeah, but uh, uh, sometimes immigrants uh, don't have social pay tax. Uh, the, the name, uh, I think. You know, I think. I think. I think. It is a uh, Oh, yeah. That's considered. Yeah, you, a lot of yeah, right. Have social, well, because you have you uh, immigrant, yeah, but you pay tax um, because you don't have social. You pay this stash is, is possibly. You. I don't think it counts into that. Yeah, they don't they don't see it as counting into this. So okay. yeah, so they still consider you a non-resident. Oh, what is the criteria of resident? Resident has a green card or? Uh, no. It, no, it, more, it, it has more to do with you paying state taxes when you do your income taxes, right? So it has more to do during income tax time because when you're applying at schools, you know, you're also providing your financial information, okay? If you have IT or social, uh, it's uh, you pay, the, pay taxes, yeah? yeah? Well, remember that there's two types of taxes. There's state taxes and there's also federal taxes, right? The federal government. Right? So we'll talk more a little bit more about that a little bit later, but now we're getting into the more, you know, the more tax purposes of this and we're running out of time. Okay? Anyway, okay, so I'm gonna move a little bit past some of this information and now what is the way that I would probably recommend that you guys should go? Okay? Um, I'm gonna wrap this up a little bit faster than I normally intended. 
when you guys go to college, and I don't know if this is the same as your countries, but when you guys go to college or university, there are two types of classes that you guys have to take. One is called GEs or general education classes. These are the type of classes that everybody must take. All university students must take these classes. Usually they involve history, math, some kind of social science, you know, a lot of these classes all university students must take. And then you have your core classes. Core classes are your major only classes. For example, if you are a computer major, computer science major, this would be your computer science classes. Does that make sense? Not the history classes. Yes? Okay, so normally, so these are the major classes and the general education classes. And most, for most universities, when you guys go to school, you guys notice that a, a good number of units are for general education classes, right? And then for core classes, it's about the other half, right? So it's pretty much half and half in terms of the numbers of units that you guys take for both classes for graduation. So which way do I recommend was probably better for you guys? Let's get into the biggest prices. I recommend that you guys go half and half. Go two years to a community college, and then after two years, go to a university. Now, why do I say that? Because at communi public community colleges, you can take your GE classes, right? So you spend those two years taking your general education classes, not your major classes. Then, when you apply, to a university, when you go there, most of your units will transfer to the university. Okay, most of them, not all of them, but most of them. Once you guys transfer over there, the, then you just take your core classes, your major classes, and that's how you finish your education. If you work very hard, it is possible to graduate this way in four years. But I'll be honest with you guys, the average for transfer students is about five years because sometimes those universities don't accept all the units. And that really depends on each university. Okay? Quick uh, question. The, in some Europe, for the Europe, if you go to, uh, overseas students go to the Europe and you start the university, usually university that accept GE class. In America, this can be possible? It depends. Again, that depends on yeah, the universities yeah. over there. It, yeah. it can be. It can. It is possible. It can be. My accepted. It is possible, but again, it, that really depends on the university. There's no guarantee that they will accept all of your classes. Okay, I'll answer some more questions in just a second. Okay, now let's take a look. Now we're talking about the education benefit. Now let's talk about the money, the financial benefit of going two years to a college and then two years to a university. Now this is the same numbers that we saw before, right? And this is, again, using the example of UCLA and PCC. If you go four years to a university, and this is only the tuition for a California resident, for a California resident like me, I would be paying 51,000 just for the tuition. That doesn't include books, it doesn't include living, doesn't include transportation. Just for tuition, I'm paying 51,000, okay? But if I decide to go two years to a community college and then finish my education two years at a university, instead of paying $51,000, i am going to be paying $28,000. It's a pretty big difference, right? Yeah. Almost 50% difference, yes. Yes. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm still getting, and which degree do I get? Yeah. Do I get the college degree or do I get the university degree? Exactly. I finished at UCLA, so I get the UCLA degree. Very good. Yes, sir. In our country, for them from the jump from two years to university, they have an exam. Is here the IBA exam, or just if you have money, you can jump? When uh, you finish the college and start the university, between they have the exam? No, no, no. No, you just transfer your units, and it's, it really depends on how good your scores are, too. Okay, right, your grades, right, your GPA. Okay, now let's talk about international students, you guys, right? Now, the same comparison with UCLA costs, right? If you guys go four years to UCLA, just the tuition, only the tuition, you guys are paying 100,000. 
right? $106,000. That's pretty expensive, right? Now, if, however, we go half and half, right? Two years out of college and then two years at UCLA, then that price goes down to 60,000, right? 60,084. Uh, 60, That's a lot, right? $40,000 is a huge amount of savings. Okay, now I'm gonna finish right now by talking about, this is for UC, right? I'm comparing PCC and UCLA. Now let's talk about if we do it for Cal States, right? I was talking about the Cal State system. If you guys decide to go to a Cal State University instead of UC, and Cal States are a good choice too. Some of them, uh, they offer very good business programs. They offer a lot of great programs over at Cal State. If you're thinking of becoming a teacher, I would probably recommend that you go to Cal State, to a Cal State University, okay? Now, if you go as a California resident, four years at Cal State LA, I use Cal State LA as my example you would be paying $6,744 per year. So if you graduate in four years, you're gonna pay $26,976. See the difference? UCLA, 51,000 for a resident. Cal State LA, 26,000. Uh -huh. Exactly, right? And it's still a university degree. It's still a bachelor's, it's still a master's, right? Okay, now, Let's say I decide to go half and half, two years at a college and then two years at a Cal State. Yeah. Now my price comes out to 15698 Again, if we were to compare it from 28000 down to 15000 after four years of study. That's not too bad, right? Four years of study, I'm paying $15,000 for my education. Okay, this is just tuition alone. Okay, now let's talk about non-residents. Yeah, <laughs> to the past one, this is UCLA, yeah? Okay. okay, so I'm gonna move on. And okay, so now let's take a look at international students, right? International students, let's say if I go four years to a Cal State University, all four years, right? I'm paying 64,992. For non-residents, the non-resident fee per year would be 16,248 per year. So for four years, I'm looking at $65,000, right? Again, if we were to compare it to UCLA, you guys see that there's already a $40,000 difference, right? Yes? Okay, now let's take a look at half and half. Two years at a college, two years at a university. So if I go two years at PCC, again, 6,720 for my first two years, I finish my general education classes, and then I pay 32,496 for the other two years at a Cal State at Cal State LA. Now for all my four years, I paid $39,216. Four years. Compare it to a UC, which is 60,000, right? That's a pretty big difference, right? So if you think about it, per year, you guys are paying about $10,000 per year, right? If you average out the cost. And that's really not too bad, no. right? Yeah, if you were to compare this, 39,216, and you were to compare this to four years for a California resident, it's pretty close, it's not too far, yeah. right? Which is why if money is a big issue for you guys, and for most people, money is a big issue, okay? I would always, always recommend that you guys go this route. Go two years out of college, finish that time, you know, and the benefit for international students is that you guys get to practice your English more at a higher level before you jump into the university. Does that make sense? The other benefit of also going to a community college is that the classes are generally smaller and you get to know your professors more. And remember, when you guys apply to a university, one thing that you guys usually need, letters of recommendation, right? And the best letters of recommendation come from your professors. So going to a community college makes it much easier for you guys to talk to your teachers, get to know your teachers, and have them write a letter for you for when you apply to UCLA, UC Berkeley, or any other, or UC San Diego, 
or any other of the big top UC schools. Make sense? So there's a lot of benefits to going to a community college like LACC, SMC, or PCC. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna stop right now because we're about to start our next TOEFL class, okay? And I'm sorry I had to go through this so quickly because there wasn't much time, but at least you guys got most of the core information. Sounds good? Yeah? If you guys have any more questions, my office is always open. Please come and see me. That's when I can answer everything for you guys, or as best as I can.